Blessed be and welcome to the Circle of Hecker. I'm Lady Amaris. So I thought I'd talk to you today about left hand path, right hand path and the crooked path. So what do they actually mean? Now many people have their own definitions as to what left hand path and right hand path actually mean. Um, and if you watched my video uh, previously on polarity, many people are very polarized as to what that definition is. So for some, uh, left hand path is evil um, and right hand path is good. Um, for others, it could be slightly different. So, so let's explore that a, a little bit. So left hand path and right hand path. So if we think left hand, right hand. Now if you're thinking of it as a, a Christian thing, now there are many passages in the Bible that talk about um, being on the left hand of God or the right hand of God. So the right hand of God is always being seen as uh, the better, the, the, um, the, the favoured side. And the, the left hand of God is the unfavoured side. We also have the idea of going diosal and widdishans. So diosal being the favoured side, being sunwise, being the, the, the direction that you um, are going for favourable um, options. And widdishans, or against the grain, would be um, going away from the favourable. Uh, so that would be the unfavourable, it would be the dark, it would be the sinister. And as we've spoken uh, about before, when it comes to uh, Widdishans, many, many people see it as dark and sinister and bad and also the, the fact of the colour being black. Um, anything that is black is then considered bad um, just, uh, just for the um, pure sake of it, it being of that colour. So we have um, the, the sinister side, the, the side that goes uh, against the grain. And this is where we have the idea of what the left hand path actually is. Going against the grain, going against the norm, going against what uh, society is actually uh, deemed being the right. So uh, let's say you have a... Um, a group of people who say that eating red apples is the only way that um, you should go. If you eat green apples, then oh, you, you know, that's bad. That's you know, green apples will give you a stomach ache. Um, you are then um, going against uh, the decree uh, of the land that everyone must eat uh, red apples. So if you don't particularly like red apples, or you're of that. Uh, type of person that goes, well, just for the fact that you said I can't do it, I'm going to try and do it, then you will eat the green apple. Um, and you may get sick, but then you will go, maybe that green apple is better if it's cooked and in a pie. So then you will see different uh, ways of looking at things. So going against the grain, going against the norm, also is seen as thinking for yourself. So if anyone who thinks for themselves and goes against the grain, goes against the party line, uh, you are then seen as being of the left-hand path or of the sinister. You can also think of it in terms of generations. Uh, let's say, we'll, we'll talk about, I think it's probably easier because it's a, quite a, a vast difference, is the 60s. The 60s, um, the late part of the 60s, uh, was the era of when you had the hippie revolution. And that was a stark difference to what people were doing before then. So there, they were going against the norm, against, against their parents, against the grain, against establishment, against uh, rallying against everything that uh, um, their parents stood for which means that they were travelling the left-hand path. They were 
questions, questioning. They were looking into um, alternatives. They were thinking for themselves. They were going, oh, I would like to maybe go this way instead of, instead of that way. All of these would be considered left-hand path ideas. Then we see if we can take it to um, another level where it would be um, someone who is uh, maybe of a Christian faith but their idea of Christianity is not the same as the people down the streets idea of Christianity. So um, if they are looking at it from their point of view, they are the right, they are the, the good, they are the right hand path and the people down the street are the bad, the left hand path, the wrong. So there's, there's a way of seeing left-hand path, right-hand path is in, in, an, in an idea of ideals and ways of doing things. Um, what's right for you may not be right for everyone else. Now, another way of looking at it is that people would consider right-hand path and left-hand path being black magic and white magic. So black magic, left-hand path, white magic, right-hand path. Again, we, we get into that stumbling block of uh, black magic and white magic are two polarities, two uh, opposites of exactly the same thing. Uh, we've discussed um, in previous videos that the the color black is used as a receptive thing. It is used to draw things in. And white is more of a repelling. It's used to push, push things back. So if you are doing um, black magic, um, you could be using a black candle to draw something in. You could also be doing black magic to banish something. So if you're using any of uh, the sigils that you would find on um, the Tree of Life, so if you were working with Saturn per se, you would be performing black magic. So uh, again, it is, it is kind of a, a semantics and, and how you're looking at things as to be what's black and what's white, what's good um, and what's evil. Again, that is um, something that is uh, subjective to, in most people's eyes. Um, what's good for the collective may be evil for uh, people who are not part of the collective. Um, if you are in one country and um, what is good for that country may be seen as evil for another country. Um, would be seen as sinister and, um, and you know, black magic. Um, East, West, um, one religion against another religion. So again, we're talking about left-hand path, right-hand path. So if we look at it now in terms of our body, the left hand of the person and the right hand of the person, or the right hand, which is usually seen as the masculine side, as the, um, the right side, um, and the feminine side, which is seen as the left-hand side. So again, you can all see how the correlation of good and bad has come through in gender as well. In many, in many societies, women are seen as, as um, sinister and uh, to be, to be uh, what's the word, um, shunned and, and uh, considered evil. Um, especially if they thought for themselves or uh, did things that were against the norm or against their father or against their husband. Uh, anyone seen as doing what is uh, good for themselves as opposed to good for someone else. So we have uh, that idea of uh, balance between ourselves. We have the feminine side and we have the masculine side. We have the sinister side and we have the, uh, the non-sinister side. Um, we have the light and the dark side. And we need those to be a, a, full, uh, a full spectrum uh, person. And if you take it to uh, just the idea of black and white, you need to have the darkness, you need to have the black, you need to have the shadow to be able to define 
the contours of a face in a photograph. If you didn't have that black, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that. And, and on the other side, if you didn't have the white, you wouldn't be able to have that uh, the light to be able to see those those um, shadows and those those curves and those nuances. Uh, so you need both to be able to fully see the uh, the idea or the the uh, the way. Left hand path being um, service to self, uh, looking at um, the the individual as being um, God. As being um, deity, as being the uh, um, and and seeing um, the divine within, and um, developing that, developing the the divine within. Now you have that um, that extreme where you would have the left hand path to the extreme being complete service. To self, complete uh, disregard for anyone other than the self, um, to the point where they would do um, would do anything for self-preservation. Uh, let's say um, uh, severe um, um, service to self is rising up the corporate ladder and not caring who you um, step on uh, and what you do to get there. Uh, you don't care about anyone else. It is all about your, um, you, you rising to the top. And if you think of the right-hand path, the right-hand path would be seen as uh, seeing the godhood or deity a lot of the times uh, being on the outer, being in the rocks, in the trees, in, in the sky, um, in, the, in the land. Um, so it being everywhere that, um, that is not inward, it's been on the outer. So the, the right-hand path would be deity on the outer, deity um, in the um, exoteric as opposed to the esoteric being on the inner. And many religions have taken on this concept of God or deity being on the outer, being, um, being removed from, from the self. Um, and sometimes to a point where you have uh, the you, you have an intermediary, which is the priest, um, and then you have uh, deity. To the point where that is that so far removed um, and so far on the outer, and that would be to the extreme extreme, uh, where you, um, in that case, is that it is uh, you have no consequence. You um, are just um, almost a pawn in uh, deity's big plan, and. Um, it doesn't matter what happens to you. You sacrifice yourself and martyr yourself uh, for the cause of, of deity uh, of, or what you perceive that cause to be. And uh, you have no, let's say, self-worth because it is all about union with God, union with um, the, the outer, this perceived outer. Uh, and, and to that purpose, you you nullify yourself um, and that is on that is the extreme of right hand path now we also have the crooked path the winding path the uh, the twisted path this is the path that um, you say that winds between the left hand path and the right hand path forging forging its own path now, I talked about, uh, in my previous video, in polarity, about how polarity is the extreme and how... So your idea is to get as close to the centre as you can to become balanced. Now, this isn't going to happen, and I did say that being in the centre, being in that zero point, isn't the ideal. Uh, you need to uh, move from side to side, if you will, um, being as close to centre as you can, but not being in 
center point in stagnation. You still need to move, you still need to, to go forward. But how that movement goes uh, is, is the trick. Uh, you want to be able to be center so that you can see both sides. If you are polarized, as I said, you are in the extreme and there's no way that you can see all the way to the other side to see the other's point of view. But the closer you are to center, the closer you are to balance, the easier it is for you to be able to see the other's point of view, to see and grasp and understand the other side. So if you walk the crooked path, the twisted path, sometimes you're on the left-hand path, sometimes you're on the right-hand path. You are twisting and moving and you are forging your own path. You're forging your own path where, at times, you will look after yourself. Now that's not in a, a selfish way because we are not to the extreme. We are looking after ourselves in, in the way of let's say, in, in a mundane way. We're looking after ourselves by making sure that we eat the right food, that we get enough exercise, that we are stimulating our, our minds um, and keeping our bodies um, healthy. So that would be seen as um, a left-hand path thing to do because you are catering for your own needs, you're catering for the self. Now, there are times when you would be in the right hand path where you would be catering for another's needs you would be catering for the for the outer uh, making sure that someone else was okay whether it is um, members of the family or um, whether it is the person down the street um, it could be the homeless person that you that you met and you um, gave them um, you know, a cup of coffee and um, some some money so that they could uh, have a, a warm bed for the night. Um, it's that sort of thing which would be seen as right-hand path because it's seen as, as good and um, charitable, but also the fact that you are looking to the outer, you are, you are doing something on the outer, you're not doing something for the inner, for, your, for yourself. So is that winding between the two paths? Sometimes you will be catering for yourself and other times you will be catering for others. But it, it is that balance that is achieved, that black and white, that positive and that negative, the, uh, the left hand and the right hand. We need the left hand and the right hand to be balanced. Um, now, if you have to do everything with your right hand, then you are seen as unbalanced, as everything is on one side, everything is, is leaning to the one side, and you aren't, uh, you aren't balanced, you aren't centered. You don't have the ability to be able to use one hand for one thing and another hand for the other thing, something that it is um, more inclined to um, the left hand, you would use your left hand. Something that's more inclined to the right hand, you would use that. But when you only have that one path, all things must try and filter through that path and not all of them can and that means that you become unbalanced. So if you're walking the crooked path, the winding path, you see and take care of the inner but you also take care of the outer. It is that balance, as within, so without. As without, so within. God and deity are on the inside, but they are also on the outside. We are a small fragment of deity. So deity is us, and we are deity. Of left-hand path, right-hand path. Um, has also come from an Eastern philosophy, like many things that have um, filtered through to uh, Western magic and into uh, witchcraft and Wicca, is uh, a lot of Eastern philosophy. Uh, the idea of karma is, is one of those. And left-hand path and right-hand path are another one of those things. Uh, also going on uh, the idea of God being on the um, inner for the left-hand path and um, God of deity being on the outer for the right-hand path. If you had uh, someone who is, say, a, a stereotypical um, um, 
Satanist or um, Luciferian or um, well, all those all those ones that people like to tout um, as being left hand path um, or the poster child for left hand path. You'd say I think um, if anyone says Satanist, the very first thing that people would automatically think of is sinister left hand path um, and work with with demons and um, and um, worship um, dark gods. Now, with the idea of worshipping um, um, a deity, uh, that would be seen as right-hand path. It would be seen as worshipping something that is on the, on the outer. Um, so if you worship something that's on the outer, then you are effectively right-hand path. So there are um, ideas that uh, there are people who are on the outer side, people would say, oh, they're left-hand path, but they're actually following the right-hand path within the mode of, of uh, say, um, a Satanist or a Luciferian who um, is worshipping deity on the outer. They are following the right-hand path within that uh, mode of um, religious expression. I hope that makes sense. Now, if you are following one path, think of that path as the well-trodden path, the path that um, is now straight and narrow and confined and uh, there is only that direction. There is no deviation. There is just that path. Uh, it is well worn. It is almost paved. Uh, it is that well worn, um, and it is, as I said, straight. If you think of the winding path, the crooked path that goes from one to the other, you are forging your own path. You're going where no one has gone before. You are being the true ideal of what a witch is. A witch um, is the person that forges their own path, is that wild path where they are either black or white. They are positive or negative, depending on that situation. Just as nature is positive and negative, can be seen as cruel sometimes and nurturing on other times. You are forging your own path. And when you are forging your own path, that means that you are in your own power. You control your power. It is said that uh, walking the crooked path, this is walk without rhythm and you won't attract the worm. When you're walking on either one path or the other, the right-hand path or the left-hand path, that well-trodden path, that path that, as I said, is paved, then you are trudging along in the same manner that everyone else has, that same manner. So you boom, 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 boom. What does that do? That attracts the worm. When you walk without rhythm, when you walk one side and the other, oh, you may be over here, and the next time you're over here. There is no rhythm, there is, or no discernible rhythm. You are flowing, going with the flow, going with nature, going with the tides and the rise. You are not boom, 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 boom. Boom, going down one particular path. When it comes to, to witchcraft, people will also say left-hand path, right-hand path. And when they're saying that, they've got the idea of uh, right-hand path being, uh, say, Wicca, and left-hand path being um, you know, anyth anything else that's not Wicca. Um, 
as I said, as we said before, Satanists seem to be the poster child of the left-hand path. But you have others that would be seen as as left-hand path when we when we're looking in the context of going against the norm, going against what um, is perceived as the right. So anyone that was not of the Wiccan faith but still practiced magic, so to speak, um, would be seen maybe as the left-hand path. Um, anyone who didn't follow uh, the Wiccan read would be seen as following the left-hand path. Um, and, uh, and so you, you then um, get into that trap of saying uh, good and bad, black and white, um, my side's better than your side, um, polarity. Um, when um, you need both to survive, you need both for those nuances. And if you get into that trap of debating um, the, the um, my side's better than your side, um, my kung fu is better than your kung fu, the, um, the right hand path and the left hand path, and that that fighting that many have um, and that polarity that many have with their ideas of what that actually means, um, you're not going anywhere. You're just continually saying, um, you know, my side's better than your side and not growing and not changing and not, not understanding. So travel the crooked path, be balanced, use your left hand, use your right hand, because when you do that, you put them together for the triangle of manifestation. If you only had one hand, you're not manifesting in a balanced way. Remember, you must have the good with the bad, the light with the dark. You must have the upper and the lower to be able to manifest and create in this dimension. You need the two to make the one. Blessed be.